Well, my able-bodied assistant uh, saved me a little grief. Either way, I could do it. It's, it's just probably a little easier to do it now, and that is, I forgot that the customer had asked that we put some initials in, in this. And I guess that they're the initials of the grandfather, although I don't really know. It just said the initials are E-N-L. So <clears throat> the question is, how and where? <laughs> and what do they need to look like? They didn't specify any of that, so I'm assuming that it, that part's up to me. And, uh, but it would be easier to do now while it's loose uh, rather than do it later. It could be done either way, but it'd just be easier to hold it still and things on the, on the desk, I believe, this way. Now I just have to figure out what I'm going to do about that. I didn't show it on camera, but I went to the computer and put in the initials there in the program and sent it over to the laser cutter and had the laser cutter cut that out. And uh, had a little bit of assistance from my assistant. <laughs> I could have got it done, but he, he made it faster, I will say that. Now, my only problem is opening up the tubes of the filler that I'm going to use. And they are stuck. That's crazy. Makes me wonder if the contents are going to be any good. Usually don't have that problem. So I'm going to use a white filler. I was thinking about doing it with wood or shell, but the truth is that it's so small that this kind of filler really looks just as good. And I think it'll, in fact, I think it'll look better because it's uh, nice and clear and clean. I talked to the family about it, or to the lady about it, that owned the fiddle, I guess, and it was her grandfather's. And uh, anyway, she kind of just said, leave it up to me, whatever I thought would look the best. And I kind of think this makes the most sense and will look just fine. Because once you get down to the, this small, even if I used real wood or shell or anything, it's really hard to kind of tell what it is. Yeah, those are really dried up a lot. They're, the liquid on the inside seems like it's okay, but the, I might have to clean the threads on those and put a little lubricant on that or something. Okay, so I've got this here. And if you're wondering what this is, it's just Prattly. Um, and then it's got uh, K-I-T-S-V-A-S. -S. I don't know really what that means. Wit. So I don't know if that's German or what that is. But it's a, over here it says quick set white. So I guess that's what it means in German. It's my best guess. And if it's not German, sue me. It looks like German to me. We've had good luck with this. This is really a good filler. It gets hard, looks nice, it's, it's real white. So it should be just fine for this purpose. Much faster than doing the other way and uh, will save the customer a lot of money and accomplish the same goal. And in my opinion, will look just as good or better. I put it on from all the different directions because uh, Sometimes you can get an air pocket in there and so I put it on and pull it pull it off, put it back on, pull it off in different directions like that to try to fill the void real well. And then I'm gonna scrape it up and leave it a little bit proud right over the inlay because typically stuff like this shrinks and that'll give it enough room to to draw in more stuff if it shrinks. So now we'll just have to wait and see what that looks like when it's dry. My friends, I got the uh, initials inlaid in here and I'll be truthful, it's not my favorite inlay job that I've ever done, but I think it accomplishes what they wanted to do and it did it reasonably economical. Um, we put his initials, of course, E-N, 
uh, L there. And uh, I cleaned it up under the microscope. What I did was I, I cut this out with the laser cutter. <clears throat> now I've cut these out for truss rod covers and things and filled them with this white in the past and I thought they looked really nice. I was trying to give it a little bit more, I don't know, just, it, just a little bit bigger look, I guess. And, uh, you know, it kind of backfired on me a little bit. And I think maybe because of the uh, curve in this, I mean, it's not bad. I, I cleaned it up under the microscope and got it just as neat and, and as good as I can do. But I just, I was, you know, you always want more. And it just didn't give me quite what I was wanting. I hope the family will be happy with that. I think it's going to look fine once it's on the instrument and everything. Um, anyway, I'm not going to spend any more time on that part. I'm going to go ahead and get these two pieces mated together. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, use my nail trick because uh, it's really hard to keep these flat surfaces still once you get the glue on them. And uh, so let's do that right now. Okay, it's time to get this glued on here. It, for those of you who haven't seen my videos in the past and see how I do the two pin method, you drive in a tiny brad nail. These are little wire nails, but the smallest you can find. You drive one in somewhere there, someone here, and just, you're only driving them in an eighth of an inch. You're not driving them in very far. And then you take a pliers and you cut them off flush uh, and I use a side cutter and the side cutter, you know, has a little V in there and so it leaves a little nub. Then you line your fingerboard up like this and you take like a plastic hammer or something and you tap it right there and you tap it right here. It makes a mark. Then I take a little tiny wire drill and just drill the hole right there exactly. And you only drill it again, just very shallow. And that locks it all together so that, you know, you can get glue on there, uh, clamp it up, and you don't have to worry about it sliding around. Yes, I know about the salt method. I do not use it. Again, they make all kinds of glue spreaders, but they don't make any that are better than this one. And if you're concerned that I'm not using hide glue, the reason is this glue is far superior. This is Tight Bond Original. It holds just fine, but if you need to take it apart, it's actually very easy to take apart. I would even say easier than hide glue in some cases. Not all cases, but some cases. Hide glue is not very consistent is the problem, where this stuff is very consistent, you know. It pretty much comes apart with the same amount of water every time, and it comes apart with the same amount of heat every time, where hide glue can vary widely. And there you go. And it locks itself right into place. So now I can clamp it without any fear of it moving. And I'll show you what it looks like once I get all the clamps on it. Well, there's what she looks like all clamped up. I've cleaned the glue squeeze out off a couple of times with a little damp rag here and uh, it seems to be ready to just sit and do its thing it's all cleaned up so we'll just let it set for a couple hours probably and then we'll try to fasten this thing up to the body the neck has been drying for about an hour and a half almost that long and that's long enough to take the clamps off because even the glue manufacturer says it needs to be clamped only an hour. Um, it looks dry on the edges to me. What, the reason I want to move is because I want to move on and try to clean up these. The, the ebony is proud of this neck on both sides. And I want to clean that up and I think I'll do that with files. I might even do it with a scraper and maybe and probably both before I'm done. You can feel it a little bit on both sides. To be honest, I've got it a little bit more on this side than I have it on this side, but you can feel it on both sides. So I want to clean that up, taper it out, make it look good. Well, that's, that's fine right there. You can see 
where I, what I've done. Now, right here, admittedly, I touched it a little bit, but up in here, maybe a tiny bit, but you can see how it's nice. And you really can't feel it now. On this side, you might be able to still see it. Now, this side wasn't as bad as that side, but you can still, I can catch my fingernail on it there. And so we're gonna clean that up. I probably only used the small one on this side because it's much closer. That's pretty close right there. Now, what I typically do is take a scraper. And in this case, I'm gonna use these little micro scrapers and see if I can scrape it clean and get it right up to the edge there and get rid of the file marks. I think that's just fine. Uh, take a, I'll take a fine piece of sandpaper here in a moment. Here's some 600 and I'll just use this right here on the edge kind of blend it a little bit. You really can't feel it at all now. It's just all like one piece. There's little spots of the finish is not even in areas here. And then of course I scratched it too, but I think I'm gonna just take a little bit coarser. This is a little coarser feeling sandpaper and I'm just gonna just work it back kind of, I don't know, kind of like I'm uh, feathering it because there's some chips and things and this will just kind of feather the, the chips and all of that back together. I'm good with that, I think. I'm not gonna oil it down right now. I'll wait and do the whole instrument a little later when we do the final cleanup. I, I hadn't really noticed it before, but there's lots of chipping around the scroll area. I think I'll get back out my uh, shellac and stain and see if we can touch all that up, similar to the way we did the body. I think it'll just look better. Here's kind of a before look of the peg head. That's the treble side. There's the base side. You can see it's got quite a bit more chipped out on the base side. I'm just going to go ahead and touch it up off camera and then I'll show you a look at it after it's been touched up. Well, there's what it looks like after the touch up. It looks quite a bit better. You can, you can see it, but you know, from across the room or a little ways away, it doesn't show up like it did. So it looks a lot better. And that's just my first attempt. I may touch it up some more later. But right now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and move on to putting the neck on this. So now that the fingerboard's glued on there, I want to test it again and make sure the height is correct. And it looks just perfect. So you can't hardly beat that. Straight wise, it looks pretty straight. That's being critical, it's just a hair needs to go that way, but I just bumped it just a little bit and it moved and it didn't seem to change the height, so that's probably okay. Just gonna look at it and see if it really looks like it's straight or not. Okay. Still, I'd say it's pointed that way. This, the uh, end of this is probably a little bit to the treble side. I would prefer that not be the case. So if I take just a teeny bit off of this, just mostly by scraping or filing, it really doesn't take very much at this point to change it quite a bit.
it's looking pretty good. One thing I've noticed about this fiddle is this crack down the center, which I'm not 100% sure is the center line. It's definitely off from the from the end pin and the center of this slot. But I don't really see another crack where a seam where it would have been joined. So I don't really know. It's hard to tell on that part. But it, based on everything I can see and coming back to the to the tail here, it looks like it's lined up. So to me, I think we're going to go with that, which means I need to get glue all over this. And in this case, I'll use a brush. Just use this brush here. And I'll get it up on the sides. I'll put it on this tail piece. Get it everywhere. Then this goes in here like that. And I'll put some more glue in there. And then lastly, I'll put a little bit of glue on this too, just to make sure we don't leave any airspace here. Just get it all covered with glue. Not putting an excessive amount on, you understand. I'm just putting on just enough to cover it. That ought to do it. That looks really nice. Checking, double checking the height looks right on the money to me. So you can't do better than that. I'll do a little bit of cleanup and put a clamp on there and I'll show you what that looks like. Well, there's what she looks like all clamped up. I took my long rubber band and went all the way around it about four or five times and each time I pull it a little tighter. I've, I also left room where I could check the height and it's right on my seven eighths, which is what I typically set them at. It looks straight down the center. You can't do much better than that. I've got this clamped so that that tab really buckles down to the bottom of the neck there. So that's one of your key strength points right there is that that tab be hooked into that heel of that neck. That's really key for your strength. So anyway, it looks just about as perfect as it can look. So it will set that way till tomorrow. It's the next morning on the old grandpa's German fiddle. It's starting to look real nice. <clears throat> the, uh, everything turned out real nice. Uh, I went ahead and glued in the nut off camera and I glued in this uh, old tailpiece connector block, whatever you want to call that. Um, anyway, so that's glued in too. So we're about ready to start setting this thing up. But while I've still got it apart, I think I'm going to do one more thing. And that is I'm going to go over it and kind of clean it up real good. Now that we've touched up the finish in all these places, I think we can blend that all together by just wiping it down with linseed oil. I think it's going to make it look you know, uh, a lot better. Uh, it'll also get the linseed oil and seal any other little, um, you know, chips and cracks and things. Um, but I think that's the thing to do because it, it really looks nice. I think it's solid. It's, it should play really well. I thought I'd give you the look at down uh, this way. And you can see how the neck is pretty flat to the body. I mean, it's about right. But as you start turning it up, you might be able to see how the peg head is twisted. I'm not sure if you can see that or not or if there's a better angle to show it to you. Um, how it's twisted to the body, uh, that might show it better. <laughs> I think that shows it pretty good. But the peg head itself is twisted. The, the neck, it's, this part is fine. Yeah, it's really twisted. 
But that's okay. You know, stuff happens uh, when they build them and things. They're, they're not all perfect. Everybody thinks they're perfect. They're not. But it really doesn't seem to make much difference in this case. Um, it's just the looks thing. And if you don't look at it, you don't even notice it. Because <laughs> tuning it, it shouldn't make any difference. Because the, between here and, and the tailpiece, it's all correct. And that's where it really counts. So let's just clean it up a little bit. And I'll, I'll do that off camera. And then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's kind of a before. And then let's see if it looks any better here in just a moment. I got to thinking I better show the boiled linseed oil as I wipe this down because people are always asking me, what kind of linseed oil? It's just boiled linseed oil. This can is probably older than half the viewers watching. So uh, there you go. It last seem to, seems to last forever. And I just put a, you know, a, a dot of it on the cloth and then just wipe it down on these old finishes like this and uh, it almost instantly makes a difference. I took the chin rest off because it was dirty under there. I wiped the whole instrument down with a damp cloth first, uh, just a, a damp paper towel basically, and that uh, gets rid of a lot of creeping crud before I do this. And then, you know, you don't need a lot of this. A little bit goes a long way. Sorry about that phone interruption there, but that was my wife's birthday present. She doesn't know what she's getting. I told her it was for ground maintenance. <laughs> it's being delivered on a semi truck, so I'll give you some idea. <laughs> it is for ground maintenance. It's just kind of how you would define ground maintenance. <laughs> It's actually, believe it or not, for a grandma. <laughs> I, I know most of you are not gonna believe this. I swear to you, it's true. For a grandma, I bought her a motorcycle <laughs> for her birthday. <laughs> no kidding, it's a dirt bike. I'm not, I'm not joking. <laughs> it's a 250. And it's a Chinese, it's a cheapy Chinese one, but, but I, you know, I watched a lot of videos on it and everybody seems to think they're pretty good. They're, you know, they're not like, you know, everybody picks on them because they're Chinese and everybody picks on them because they don't go real fast, et cetera, and so forth. This is for grandma. We don't need one that goes real fast, you know, um, it, but they seem to, you know, everything else they talk about is exactly what we want. She, my wife used to ride motorcycles all the time when she was younger. And she's been, for years, been saying, I wish I had a motorcycle. And, you know, we'll see. I'm pretty sure, I don't think there'll be any issue with her riding it. That part, I, I'm sure of. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is the height of this one. They said it's kind of tall, and that's probably not good. I'm hoping that with, you know, my mechanical skills that I have, that I'll be able to modify it and maybe make it not quite so tall. But other than that, everything else seemed to be perfect on the <laughs> motorcycle. Here I am talking about motorcycles, polishing up grandpa's old fiddle. <laughs> but anyway, it's the truth. That's what the phone call was about. And he'll be coming any minute now to deliver it. So, um, there you go. <laughs> this turned out really nice. That, that makes them look really good, doesn't it? You know, just wiping them down with that. Um, you know, it doesn't make it look perfect. Uh, you can, up close, you can see all kinds of issues, you know. But what I wanted to do is look like a, an old, well-cared-for old violin, not, you know, a brand new, refinished, perfect, everything violin, you know. That's not what we're going for. So, there you go. I think that's going to do it. Um, might wipe up here around the peg box a little bit more. I haven't got the scroll cleaned up yet, but other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape. So, next step is setting it up to play. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. As I started to get into the setup mode here, I looked at the uh, end pin that came with it, and I said, nope, not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not ebony, and it, these kinds of pins are junk, really. So I'm going to throw that in the case, and we're going to set up a real nice ebony end pin. And this one 
even has a little inlay on the end there, which is extra nice. And um, the problem is these come full size. Th this hole is not um, very big, and I don't want to make it a lot bigger. But what I typically do is take my reamer and, and clean the hole out. And, you know, this reamer is a violin peg reamer, but it's pretty much the same taper. And so I'm just going to clean the hole out. And the other reason I like to use the reamer is I can also adjust the hole sideways up and down. A lot of times these holes are not straight um, with the body. And so I can kind of check whether it's in line and cut off that particular side that's not in line, you know. Anyway, plus a lot, a lot of times these holes have things crammed in them like little shims and things. And I think there's some shims in this one. And so anyway, this is kind of, of a way to uh, correct all those ills so that the taper will be right. I think we're doing the good thing here. Now, actually, to be truthful, this doesn't even start in there good yet. So this really needs to be shaved down quite a bit. In the past, I've just shaved them down by hand. But to be honest, my hands are so sore these days that I'm going to try a different method. I haven't really tried shaving one of these down very much on a violin uh, peg reamer. But I've got a peg reamer here, and I'm going to give it a try and see if it will work. I kind of doubt it, to be honest, but it might. See, there's the wife on the four-wheeler right now. That's not a motorcycle, but it's a four-wheeler. <laughs> okay. It's not going real well yet, but I'll have to work on it. I'll do more of that off camera, and I'll show you what the fit looks like here in just a minute. I worked with the peg shaver here long enough that I've gotten it just where it's almost going in there um, without any real force. And so... Typically, when I get it really close like that, I just tap it the last little bit. I'm going to just ever so slightly cut just a little bit more if it'll cut because I don't want to force it. And it's real close. So I think that's about it. I typically just take a little rubber mallet, tap it that last little tiny bit, and then, then it's really locked in there. It won't come out. In fact, you could hold the whole fiddle up by it like there. I'm pretty much holding the fiddle in the air with that right now. It, it locks it in there pretty nice. You just got to have a good fit. This is the, the tailpiece that came with this old fiddle. And often I just switch them out for a uh, more modern one with the adjusters built in. But these adjusters are all the same. They do match. And, you know, this, this was apparently the way Grandpa played it. So I'm going to do, just reuse this. Now, the one thing I'm not going to reuse, if I can uh, get it out of here, is this wired tailpiece loop. These are, you know, they cause a lot of problems. I mean, they work, uh, but they can also create all kinds of issues. So I'm just going to take wire cutters and just snip it off and uh, try to pull it out of there. I hope it comes out. Yep, looks like it might. Yep, I got it out of there. So, and you can even see how, it, how the wire has cut into the wood there. And that might be a problem. Um, I don't know, might, might be, might not be. My goal is to try to replace it with this uh, nylon tailpiece loop. Now this one came out of an old, another old fiddle bow just in my spare parts. So I'm not charging them for this. And that's assuming I can even get it to work. And hopefully that it's even long enough. So there's a lot of assumptions here. Um, and just till a second ago, that nut was right there where I could see it. It got underneath the pliers. And I'm going to see if I can get it to screw back on here. This is always the hardest part because I took it off of one that's used. New ones screw on pretty easy, but these used ones sometimes don't do that. It's trying to go cross-threaded, I think. 
mostly just because it can. I think I got it. I think I did. Yep. Okay, so there, there's what it looks like now. I'm hoping it's going to be long enough. It may not be long enough. They're, they're, all of these are different. This one looks like it's just going to make it. Just make it. It'll be just fine. Okay, so that, that'll be a lot better than what was on there. And now we're going to go get the strings and the bridge, and we'll start setting this baby up. I'm going to uh, start by cutting the bridge feet for this. This, uh, these bridges, it, you can buy them fitted or unfitted, and I always buy them unfitted. And these are large and well oversized. These feet are really clunky and thick. I've already marked a line on there following the contour of the top um, about how much I want to take off. And I'll take my sharp chisel and start peeling this off. Now, you don't try to take it all off in one cut or you'll break the feet pretty badly. So I just take very thin, very, very, very thin slices. The thinner, the better. That looks pretty good. And then I do the other side. It's always good to have this against something really hard uh, as you're chopping down because otherwise it'll break it off. It looks pretty good. I cut nice and smooth and it may go a little bit smaller yet. I may go a little bit smaller. And then once I get that, I take a piece of typically 220, which is what this is. By the way, the name goes to the back, so the logo goes to the tailpiece. And then I just, you know, most folks go this way with them, and I do that to some degree. But mostly I go this way, and the reason I do that is... Uh, it keeps the, I can keep the angle perfect that I want. Instead, when you do it this, when you go forwards and backwards, it rocks and it rounds off the front and the back. Um, I, you know, anyway, this is, this is more or less bucking tradition because this is not the way most people do it. I know that, but I've done it both ways and this is the way I get the best results. And I don't care what tradition says. If I get better results doing it this way, this is the way I'm going to do it. And so you notice I'm not going a long way across here. I'm barely moving it. In fact, I'm only moving it, you know, probably a sixteenth of an inch in each direction. So the feet find this exact spot and the exact shape better than if you're going up and down like this, which is the way most folks do it. You know, they'll complain that mine doesn't follow the contour, and I complain that mine follows the contour better than theirs. So they can complain all they want, but my argument is this is just as good or better. In fact, I say it's better. And the proof is typically in the pudding on how well it fits the body. And, uh, you know, it sits up there by itself and it looks really tight, airtight right now. Looks really nice. I'm going to give it a little bit more. Looks really solid, you know. You can even tap it and it sits there. And that's a very narrow foot, so, you know, even with some vibration, it's sitting very flat. So I, I'm convinced that that's just about perfect. Now I take a real sharp pencil, and I, this is not sharp, so I need to sharpen this, and then I'll show you how I mark the height. One of the troll hecklers in the previous violin setup said that this method would make the strings way too high. Uh, yeah, whatever. It doesn't. I've been doing this for 40 years, and people come back all the time bringing me their violins, so... I pretty much know what I'm doing. Um, I, you know, I, this one here is a long sweep. 
and I'm just using these as a guideline, by the way. This is not the, the final that I cut to. And then, and then this is a little shorter sweep here. And anyway, that, that kind of gives you that angle that you need. Um, and I'm gonna go over to the sander now and cut down close to these lines. It won't be exactly like that right to the line. I'll leave a little bit of the line showing. And you know, you think about that, from this end right here, it's only, it's only half the thickness of a pick uh, of this pencil high back here. And so when you get to here, it's, it's really not very much, especially when you got low action here. So the strings are going to be, if anything, if you're not careful, you can get it too low with this method. So you got to be a little careful. You don't get it too high, trust me. All right, so I sanded that off and it looks good. Now the... Uh, you know, height and, you know, the feet and all that are pretty close, but the thickness of this is still really chunky. It's really heavy. And so that has to be cut way down. And I, once again, go to my finger plane. And the trick of this is you, you need to cut uh, the way the grain wants to be cut. And right now this seems to be go doing well. But the trick is when you get to these little decorative parts, you have to be very careful because if I go across that decorative part, it'll break it right off. So on that, I cut into it like this. I'll cut that part down by going straight at it, like right here. And then I can cut across this and not hit it um, because it will break it right off, trust me. And if you want to know how I know, just ask me. <clears throat> and the only problem I have sometimes is the shavings get wrapped around the blade and then it won't cut. But this, this cuts it off very quickly and does a nice job and, and it's controlled. And once you learn how to use a finger plane, you can do a very accurate job with it. <clears throat> I actually have this set in a little bit shallow. I need to deepen it just a teeny tiny bit. It's a little shallow, so I'll do that off camera. Yeah, that didn't take long. That's much better. It's cutting much better. I had it really cutting shallow, shallow. And uh, you don't want it cutting real deep on this, but uh, you do want to be able to take off some wood because these things are really thick. And you just kind of keep watching it and make sure that the edge is staying about the right thickness all the way around. And then you just taper it back. I'm cutting off a lot of wood as you might be able to see here. There's, there's a lot of wood coming off of that. You want these to be strong of course but you want them as just as dainty and light as you can get them to transfer the sound better and let the vib let them vibrate you know on these decorative parts you need to cut into them from both ends and again not across them because they'll break off too getting there. It's still a little heavy. It's starting to starting to look pretty good. It's definitely a lot lighter than it was a minute or two ago. That's pretty darn light there now. Pretty pretty thin. Just making sure the edge looks pretty uniform. And I also just feel it and make sure it feels flat, no humps or nothing, and look across it and look, and it looks pretty flat. A little bit of a hump right there, but very minimal. And uh, then the last thing I do, and not everybody does this and you don't really have to, but I'll just take and lightly sand it because uh, that just knocks off any of those humps that are there. But it's really flat. If you learn how to use the finger plane, you can get it almost perfectly flat. So there you go. 
looks perfect. And now we will start uh, putting the wire to it, so to speak. These strings are the less expensive option that I have. These are, I believe, from Korea. And they're wrapped, and even the E string is wrapped, which is nice. And, uh, you know, because of that, I like these strings. Um, they're, they're not just a steel string. I believe they're, I believe they're a nylon core. Now, that I'm not 100% sure of. Three of them are the synthetic core, and then the E is a steel core with aluminum wrapping. So they're basically, a, you know, a, a synthetic core with a aluminum wrap, and uh, the, the tiny string, of course, is a, uh, a steel string, but it has the aluminum wrap, which softens the tone so that it doesn't sound real harsh. Now the problem is this kind of tailpiece, this is why I don't really like these tailpieces. These things, these little grooves in these often just won't fit these strings. And you know, you gotta open them up or whatever. That's why I typically change them out to the uh you know to the composite tailpiece that has the tuning tuners built in. But I'm just gonna open these up a little bit in, in hopes that I can get the string to go down in there. And I think I did. And once you get one string on, it's not so bad. <clears throat> I also put these strings on by the by the order of the peg. This is the closest peg and this is the G. So I put on the G string first. In my first wrap, I wrap on this side of the hole, on the treble side of the hole, and I go a full wrap and then I cross over. That ties the string in. And then the rest of the wraps are wrapping toward the tuning key here, uh, going toward the bass side. And that locks the string in there in the peg and it won't come loose. And it makes a nice neat job. It makes it look good. Now here, right now, I'm not going to try to get these too tight yet for a couple of reasons. Number one, we don't have a sound post in this yet. So I'm just going to put them on there very lightly, just with enough tension to hold it in place. Okay, the next string I need to put on is the tiny string, the E string. And I'm pretty sure that's this one. And again, this is just the slot. It's not going to be big enough, so I'm going to have to open the slot up. These kinds of tuners were meant a lot of times for these uh, loop-in strings, and they go in there better. Now, on wrapping this one, of course, I do exactly the same thing, except that it's completely backwards or opposite. So the first wrap will be on the base side of the hole. Then I cross back over and wrap the remaining wraps toward the treble side of the peg box. And that looks like that's gonna work out well. I always like to spread my strings out to where they use the full width of the fingerboard and not crammed up in the middle, which a lot of folks do that. I see, I see that all the time. They'll set a fiddle up and all the strings are bunched together and I don't like to see that. I like to see it spread out because that helps spread the tone across. I think this is gonna work okay. I'm a little concerned about this one here. It feels like it wants to pull up above that, but we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, the next one is the D string, and I'm, well, I'm gonna have to double check here, but I'm gonna measure them here with my calipers since the packaging doesn't seem to really tell you. Now that's assuming I can find my calipers. Well, I found my calipers and let's just see here. Of course, it helps when you turn them on. 
um, 27 thousandths. I think this is more than that. 30 thousandths. So you can see they were very close in size. So I'm going to use this one as the D. I believe that would be right. Even though the color doesn't seem like the normal to me. I could be wrong on that though. The serving on these bigger strings is really hard to get down in these slots. Okay, we're getting there. It's a, the first time you set one of these things up, you know, to get it going here. It's always tedious when everything's kind of new. Kind of open up this last slot. Should be good, I think. Hopefully, might not be enough. Okay, all the strings are on here now and all they're doing is just holding the bridge in place. Now, what I typically do is measure this um, down the E string and set it at 325 and believe it or not that's right on the nose 325 millimeters I mean it's exactly where where I typically set them so the bridge is in the right place now I need to get my tool out that will measure the height of the sound post because it did not come with a sound post or at least I didn't see one in the case anywhere and um, so this thing here slides up and down on the inside of the instrument and this can then measure the length of the sound post. So this little tool will go in here like so and then I just try to eyeball and get it about as close to where I think the sound post needs to go. And then once you get it there, you just lock it in place and then you take that out and that should be the length of the sound post. Theoretically, I've got a high grade piece of spruce that I just cut it. Uh, it's all quarter sawn, very, very good piece of wood. And I cut it to square to that'll just barely fit down through the hole. And now I'm going to see if I can turn this round on my lathe. And uh, I'll probably won't film that. I'll just chuck it up here, spin it, and cut that smooth with a file. And we'll see how that goes. Well, that took entirely too long. That's what I ended up with, a nice spruce uh, sound post that's made out of the same material that you would make the top out of. So it's a very high quality piece. And I just tried to fit it inside there. I'm not going to show that again. But uh, anyway, it's it's this is just a little piece of coat hanger with a very, very tiny micro hook on the end. And I just screw it in there like so. That holds it. I can set it in there and pull it back. And I noticed it was a little bit too long. So I'm just going to shave off a little bit more of the end of this and then try it again. Okay, so let's try putting it in there again. I've shaved off. Actually, I shaved off both ends of it just a little bit. And uh, let's see if it'll fit in there a little bit better now. And it feels like it's going to be pretty close this time. I need to get my close-up cheater glasses on here where I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take it back out of there. It's not cooperating fully. That's pretty close. I think it's still just a fraction of a hair too long. Just, just a hair too long. I'm going to take it and knock off just a little bit more length. And I think we'll have it this time. Okay, maybe we'll have it at the right length this time. This is all trial and error. There's really no better way to do it. And uh, if I could see in there a little better, that would help. And 
Gotta get my light down here a little closer. It's, it's trying to play hardball with me here, but I think I'll get it eventually. Well, I got it, but it's not where I want it. I can tell you for sure. I'm going to try to move it, but it'll probably fall. This hook on the other end lets you manipulate it around on the inside in there. And actually I got it, I think, where I want it. Pretty close anyway. I'm gonna pull it bottom just a teeny bit and this is probably where it'll fall. If I can get it to move just the least little bit, I'd be happy. Try to push it maybe instead of pull it there. Pushing is usually harder, but Let me just look at it again. I think I can live with that. I think that's pretty good right where it's at there. And uh, Okay, so it's pretty much ready to start uh, tightening up the strings. I, I don't have any little grooves in here. I typically like to mark them and, and just make the least little mark with a, with a file, but I mean like barely. I don't, I don't put much of a mark in there. And I, I like to look at them and see if I've got them all evenly spaced. And uh, I just take some sort of piece of paper like this. Space those two, see if the other two are about the same. They're pretty close. And those two are about the same. So that's pretty good right there. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and mark on both sides of them. This real fine pencil. And then I just take this out and I just take my little tri-cornered file and, I, you know, again, I just barely make a little mark just with the corner of the file there. Now, now the question is, did I get the length right again or did I, you know, that was just pure luck the first time, I think. Yep, yeah, it was just, just a hair close this time. That's pretty darn close right there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tune it up off camera and I'll show you what it sounds like when I get her tuned up. For you, my friends, it's been mere seconds. For me, it's been several days. I was thought I was going to get right back to this, finish it up, but things got in the way. <laughs> it's just amazing how many things get in the way around here. But anyway, I believe she's all tweaked out, finished up, um, as good as it can be done. I pulled out the only bow in the case that's sort of okay to use. I'm not going to rebuild the bows for them. Uh, that's pretty expensive, number one, and you can buy a pretty decent bow these days <laughs> for less than I can re redo them. It's got a real good tone. Uh, you know, if we had a real good fiddle player here, this thing would sound really good. It's, it's a decent sounding fiddle. You know, I just can't, I can't get much out of a fiddle, but but it really actually does have a good sound. I can tell when they've got a good sound when they don't. This one does actually have a good woody tone to it. Um, it would sound great. The fact that the uh, peg head is really twisted, and you can probably see it right there in the picture. It's pretty darn twisted. Doesn't really hurt anything because it it's an optical illusion. It makes you think there's a problem. But honestly, the fingerboard is pretty darn straight. If, you, if I can cover that up, you can see that everything's just about fine on it. It's, it's really 
really good. The, this is not twisted here. It's only twisted at the peg head. And it was just carved that way. Or it twisted naturally because of moisture or whatever in the wood or whatever. But I don't think so. I think it was actually carved that way. It, it just looks like it was to me. Um, otherwise, it's, you know, I think it's up in very, very good shape. I hope the family enjoys it. We've got another grandpa's old fiddle to uh, more or less put on display. Thank you for watching. Thank you.